Hey, welcome back everybody. This video is going to introduce object-oriented programming and essentially this is the table of contents of what we're going to be talking about in the upcoming videos. So we're not going to get super deep in this one, but in the upcoming videos you better get ready because it's going to be awesome. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so first thing, what is object-oriented programming? It's basically a way to design our programs into what are known as objects, and also we have classes. So those are two keywords you should know, objects and classes. Now we're gonna talk about the difference between those two in the following video. This video is more focused on the why of object-oriented programming. Well, right now we're working with very simple programs, and usually we have to pretty much type out exactly what we want to happen. And if we wanted to create a larger application, we're eventually going to run out of willpower to keep typing every exact step that we want to happen. We've learned about a couple of techniques to make it easier on us. So we've learned about loops to basically repeat a process over and over again. And we talked about branching to go different ways. And we've talked about collections, which make it easier to store data. But all of these are just the basics. What really helps us is objects. So an object is basically a structure to represent something. So you can think of a car as an object. You can think of a file as an object. You can think of a person as an object. And basically we're going to learn how to create code that makes it very, very easy to create these objects. So if we wanted to write code for 100 people to represent 100 users or something, we don't have to manually create every single one by ourselves. We can do this programmatically. Now, if that doesn't really make sense, that's fine. We're going to get through all of the concepts in the upcoming videos, and then we're gonna get hands-on creating our own classes and objects. This is usually a tipping point for people where they either decide to go all in and learn the material, or they back off and say, hey, this stuff is not for me. I'm going to encourage you guys to push through. This is one of those things where it can be challenging up front, but once you understand it, you can look back and be like, wow, it makes so much sense. <laughs> kind of like when you're super young, and you're learning how to, to multiply. You're probably like, Psh, why do we need this when we could just add numerous times or something like that? But we don't realize the value that multiplication brings. I literally remember a conversation I had with my neighbor where he explained he was learning multiplication. And at this point in my life, I've never even heard of multiplication. And I was just so annoyed because I was like, ugh, there's more after addition and subtraction. Like, what are we ever gonna use this for? But now looking back, I understand it much more. <laughs> It's probably a terrible illustration, but object-oriented programming is similar in nature and that once you get past the concepts and understand what you're doing, you can realize the value of it and how every single thing we do in coding is going to use object-oriented programming, at least in the tasks we're doing in these series. There are other paradigms of programming. So for example, there's functional programming, which kind of organizes things into functions. This is object-oriented programming, so we organize things into objects. So hopefully that's your good million foot view. Now we're going to zoom in into like the thousand foot view and learn about classes and objects. So stay tuned. Be sure to check out that next video and hit subscribe. I'll see you then. Peace out.